I've been fishing since I was seven, which was 81 years ago. My name is Chuck Prohl. I live here in Cambridge, right next to my boat. And uh, I've been fishing for stripers. I was probably 26 years old. 1956. That's when striper fishing was good. And I got into it and never got away from it. I, I fish like uh, six or seven times a week. I love the water, you know. I didn't really get into uh, stripers until I moved to uh, Bay Ridge, just outside of Annapolis, right on the bay, and uh, had access to good, good striker fishing. In those days, the bay had the most beautiful grass beds. And when we lost them after Agnes, it ended a lot of good fishing in the rivers. In 1985, the uh, DNR put a moratorium on rockfish. And that was recreational and commercial. I guess in 1990, they ended it and we had a season in the fall of 1990. I can remember it to this day. And on the first day, everybody caught fish. I mean, big fish. The river was full of 12 pound fish. And the DNR was so afraid we were gonna catch them all, they, they closed the season in 10 days. And we had to wait another whole year till October the next year before we could keep them, but we caught a ton of them. We went fishing with Dad a lot. I don't know what he would do if he couldn't fish. Yeah, I learned how to fish. I have a great memory that's 10 years ago at the mouth of the bay. Best fishing trip we ever had. The water was crystal clear and you could actually see the fish coming after your lure. And I hooked it and I'm like, Dad, take this. Is it, a, do I have a fish? He says, yes, you have a huge fish. And he always made you feel like oh, you were the best fisherman. <laughs> My name is Beth Versack, and I've been a fisheries biologist with Maryland Department of Natural Resources Straight Bass Program for 24 years. So the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service's tagging program consists of eight major programs along the Atlantic coast. So we've got Virginia, Maryland, Delaware, New Jersey, New York, Massachusetts, North Carolina. So when we actually tag the fish, we collect data. Uh, we collect their size, uh, the sex if possible, location. During the moratorium years, there were some big sacrifices and tough decisions made and that was followed by some conservative management that's gotten us where we are today. If we actually lost striped bass, I can't imagine uh, what a colossal failure that might have been. You know, these fish are produced here and travel up and down the coast and everybody benefits from them, but the change to our local fishing landscape would probably be pretty shocking to many people. The biggest thing that I'm responsible for to monitor striped bass populations and striped bass abundance is the Young of Year striped bass survey. We have 22 fixed survey sites scattered among the four largest nursery areas here in Chesapeake Bay. Um, we visit each of those sites three times every summer. The ultimate result of all of that work is the striped bass juvenile index. It's accepted as the most reliable indicator of striped bass reproductive success and is a good indicator of future abundance. My name is Gabe Grease and I'm a fish biologist with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. I, I work in partnership with state fish and wildlife agencies from Maine to Virginia in order to ensure that the sport fish restoration money um, gets to them. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service's Sport Fish Restoration Program is a really unique partnership with 
Fishing tackle manufacturers, state fish and wildlife agencies, and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service that together accomplish sport fish conservation throughout the United States. So a manufacturer's excise tax on fishing tackle and a tax on the gas attributable to motorboats and small engines is collected each year. And then we redistribute that money to state fish and wildlife agencies so that they can do the hard on the ground work. I'm so proud to be associated with this program because of all the good that it does um, to conserve and restore sport fish in their habitats. I've been fishing for striped bass probably, probably like 30 years. The interesting thing was when I first started fishing in, in New England, in, in Buzzards Bay specifically, back in the early to mid 80s, there were no striped bass. I know that the management practices that were put in made a big difference. I think that the current system of having tackle and fuel costs, a portion of that expenditure by sport fishermen, going back into the resource in a dedicated fund, I think that's incredibly important. The whole culture has, has grown up around it. I mean. If you're an inshore fisherman, you fish for striped bass. It's an incredible, incredible resource, and we're, you know, blessed to have it here. It's just such a good feeling, you know, when you set the hook on a striper, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's this uh, atmosphere here on the river. It's a great river, you know. The feel of a striper, that's a great feel too.